So to start, we're going to first assemble these four PCBs. We're going to start with the power board, which looks like this. And we're going to start by mounting the voltage regulator. So if you look at the power board, you'll notice there's a spot right here with four pads. And this is where the voltage regulator goes. And you insert it in like this. Uh, make sure that uh, it's, fa it's mounted this way, not upside down like that. If you do that, it won't work. The voltage regulator will get hot, and you have a chance of frying this whole voltage regulator out. So make sure you mount it like this. You can see there's writing here on this voltage re regulator, and the fins of the heat sinker are pointing up. So once that's mounted, I went ahead and bent these down a little bit, and we're going to go ahead and solder this into place. Once that's soldered, we're going to go ahead and trim off these little pins that are left on the voltage regulator. Now you're going to take your momentary push buttons and you're going to go ahead and mount them into these slots here. So line them up like this and then just press them into place. So you have something like that. And then mount the other one. So that's that. And we're going to go ahead and solder these into place also. So now we're going to go ahead and mount the two capacitors onto the power board. So see there's uh, these two little squares here. So and you could see one of them has a little plus and a little minus there. So this is where we're going to put the 10 microfarad electrolytic. So the longer lead is positive and the shorter lead is negative. Also the shorter lead has a stripe on the casing here. So we're going to go ahead and mount it into place like so. And then bend the leads out of the way. Then mount the point, point 0.1 microfarad capacitor and that goes right beside it. Like so. And then we're going to mount the two 1K resistors right here and right there. So to do that, take your resistor bend it into kind of a V or a U shape like that and then you're going to go ahead and put it into place. So there's one and then there's the second one. And then of course bend the leads out of the way. And Now we're going to solder it into place. Once that's soldered, we're going to go ahead and trim off all the leads. Wear eye protection when you do this because these things can go in your eye and it doesn't really feel too good when that happens. So wear sunglasses or some actual eye protection when clipping off these leads here. So once you've soldered these capacitors and these resistors into place, we're going to start soldering the 4-pin female header. And to do that, you just, uh, on the reverse here, you'll see that there are four holes here marked RX, D, TX, D, GND, and VCC. And you're just going to take this header, and you're going to jam it in here, and then you're going to bend it at a right angle like that. And then you're going to bend the pins up, like so. And then we're going to go ahead and solder this header into place. And then we're going to go ahead and trim the leads. And once that header is mounted, we're going to go ahead and start mounting the 3.3 volts logic converter. So the board looks like this, and mine comes with a four, uh, two four-pin headers. Um, you can find the seller on uh, eBay. I believe I've also mentioned this in the parts list. So we're going to go ahead and just take these headers and place them in the hole here and here and then we're gonna take our little 3.3 volt logic converter and we're gonna stick it over the top of the holes so make sure that you have it lined up, lined up like this with VCC A on the left and VCC B on the right if you don't if you have this thing upside down it'll uh, kind of burn out and smoke will come out of this component so try to avoid that or else you need a new uh, board, a new 3.3 logic converter. 
So we're going to go ahead and just solder the 3.3 the volt logic converter to the headers. Right, once that's done, you should have something that kind of looks like this. You can just take this board out. But we're going to go pop it back in, and we're going to go ahead and solder on the back here. So uh, you'll need to hold this in place, because if you don't, it'll fall out. So just hold it in with a piece of tape, or if you have uh, these helping hands, uh, these third hand actually, this tool, uh, it's much easier just to clip it in like this and then just solder it like that. But if you don't have a uh, third hand, you'll need to tape it in place. All right, well that's soldered into place. We're gonna go ahead and trim off the leads. So once that, that's done, all you have to do is just mount the LED here. You could use whatever LED you want. I would just recommend you use one of the LEDs you have uh, with your uh, goggles they bought for goggles, but it doesn't really matter. Use whatever color you have. I'm just going to grab a random one that I have. It's probably going to be, I don't know, red, white, or something like that. So, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and place this LED into this spot here. Uh, this is a 3mm LED, and the stencil on the PCB is a, for a 5mm, but it doesn't really matter. Um, as long as you get the polarity right, it will still work. So if you look at the stencil on the PCB, you'll see a flat spot on the right and a rounded spot here. And then if you look at your LED, you should have a flat spot on the side with the shorter leg. I don't know if you guys could see that. Or you might, maybe you'll just have to take my word for it that there's a flat spot here on the side of the short leg. So we're going to go ahead and line up that flat spot and that short leg with the flat spot here. So just put it into place and then bend the pins. And then we're going to solder that LED into place. And then of course we're going to trim the leads. And with that, we're done populating the uh, power board. So what's left to do is attach this to the four AA battery pack and then attach it to the rest of the components, which we'll make. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to attach this board to a battery pack and how to connect power to it. So your battery pack should look something like this. It should have a black wire, it should have red wire, and they should be stripped. But if they're not, you should get your wire strippers and strip those. So um, we're going to basically glue this PCB to this battery pack and then solder wires to it. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and take our uh, Bluetooth module. Mine looks like this. Yours should look pretty much the same. So we're going to take it and we're going to go ahead and plug it into where the 4-pin female header is. So, just like that. So, yeah. So that's in place. And then we're going to mount it with hot glue like this. And then we're going to connect the wires like that. So, while I'm waiting for my hot glue gun to heat up, we're going to take these wires. We're going to trim them down to size. So, let's see. Somewhere like that. So need like two inches or so. So I'm going to trim these wires. And then I'm going to go ahead and strip them. And then we're going to go ahead and tin these two pads here, which is the GND and the V+. So to tin these pads, what you need to do is just take your soldering iron, take your solder, and then just up heat up the pad of the soldering iron and then touch a little bit of solder and you should get the solder to flow right on the pads and you should have something that kind of looks like this there we go we have dome looking uh, blobs of solder on our pads here be careful not to overheat these with your soldering iron for too long because they will come off and then that is a complete nightmare and you'll have probably have to get another power board so yeah be careful in soldering because these pads will come off and you'll have a bad time assembling this kit. 
So yeah. So there's these pads tinned, and I'm gonna go ahead and solder these two wires to this board. So if you look at your uh, board here, you'll see a GND and a V plus here. The black wire goes to the GND, and the red wire goes to the V plus. So I'm gonna go ahead and solder them into place. So to solder these wires to this board, all you need to do is just uh, touch the wire to the solder blob that you have here, and then touch that with a soldering iron. And it should magically fuse together. And then do that for the V plus also. And so you should have something that looks like this. V plus and G and D. And hopefully my hot glue gun's hot enough to tack this whole thing to this battery pack. So you're going to take this whole assembly and then you're going to take your hot glue gun and you're going to pop, apply a bunch of hot glue on the reverse side of this PCB here. Also get some on the voltage regulator and also some on the on the Bluetooth module. And then flip them all over and glue it down like so. And then while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and reinforce these connections here. So take your hot glue gun and just apply a bit of hot glue here. Then you see this gap here, we're going to go ahead and fill this with some hot glue also. And then this gap here. And then this gap also. So once we're done with the power supply module and battery pack, we're going to go ahead and test it. So load four AA batteries in here and the LED should light up. So there you have it. If this LED doesn't light up, you probably mounted this voltage regulator wrong or you probably shorted something out on the reverse side of this board. It's usually one of those two. So make sure you test this battery pack before you move on to the rest of the assembly, just to make sure that, you know, you have this battery pack done and, uh, you know, there's no problems with it. So we're just going to go ahead and turn this off and then throw this aside.